G'day guys and welcome to Gear Guide for an episode in the Coral Sea with Nomad. Awesome time guys and like we talked about in the show, just a great variety of fishing styles. Dazza, do you want to kick off? Yeah, sure. Um, lure wise, um, we I often, well nearly always, I favour big poppers up there in the Coral Sea, but this time I was using nearly solely because we didn't do it as much of that big casting as we often do. Um, I was using a Riptide 200 sinking stick bait and I uh, got um, like a couple of trevally on it, some barracuda and a few other hits, um, it, but it worked really well. Good, good, good lure. I'd use it again um, if I was using a stick bait. Um, I still like the poppers. Um, on the flats, I threw, again, another Riptide, the 155 floating. The guy uh, said to try this first up, and I liked it, and I started catching fish on it, so I didn't bother changing. Um, and the, in the floating style. So I know you guys use the singing, but I use the floating. And um, when you're when when it lands, it sits up a little bit. So when you first pull, it's a little bit like a popper where it's along the surface, and nine times out of ten, the fish that I caught were on that first sort of couple of little uh, movements across the surface. Um... Also used a mad scad a little bit on the on the on the flats when it was uh, I don't know, I wanted to move to a slightly smaller lure and um, I went back to that mad scad. So that was the flats. Um, then we did the deep water jigging. Like we did, like we said, we did lots of styles. Yeah. And I was using you know that sort of style jig with a, like the feather assist. Um, and you know this one was about 150. So anything, I mean, I tied on a few. Anything from 150 sort of to the 200 in that 30 to 60 metres of water. Um, I'll actually like that profile. I don't even know what that is. But, but you like had that, it in green and gold. I had it in green and gold, and I had it in blue and gold as well. I really like those green and bluey colours, but I lost both of those, um, or lost all those that I had in that colour. And then finally on the um, lighter jigging, you know, in that 20 to 30 metres, I was using, you know, this sort of profile jig um, around the anywhere between 50 to 70 grams, and this one's 60, so, you know, right in the middle. And um, and a little bit, I used a couple of soft plackies, you know, like around that seven inch um, Z-Mans, swimmers and jerk shads. And finally, um, when we we're trolling, I was uh, using these X wraps. I mean, um, and as far as the trolling lure go, I know a lot of people use a lot of other lures, but I find it really hard to go past these X wraps. And you take them up there and the guy would go, oh, an X wrap, an X wrap, can we tie that on? And we end up, I mean, I lost, I took up, a few, and we lost a few to Spaniards yeah, and, and, and big fish. So um, I love those as well. So that's the lures. In terms of um, uh, reels and rods, um, for my heavy casting and jigging, you know, you can't go past a Stella 18,000, you know, and I think that's what the boat uses as well. No, they use... Sorry, divers. Divers, sorry. Um, but, yeah, I use these Stellas 8,000 running 100-pound braid, and I use the same... Uh, reel for both the heavy casting and for the jigging um, and then on the uh, light lighter gears I was using a um, sustained 5000 with 50 pound braid um, another reel with 40 pound but you know I, I upped it to 50 pound on this one um, which was really good in terms of rods uh, for the uh, casting, the bigger casting, I've got a nice carpenter, Japanese made rod. You don't need one quite as expensive as that. They are an expensive rod, but for the amount of GT fishing I've done, I've lashed out and sort of spent the money and bought that Japanese made rod. And with the smaller rods, I've got an SC Labo, um, which is uh, for the lighter gear, it's a rated to PE3, so you know, 30 to 40 pound braid, and it's a pleasure to use all day. Again, it's probably a little bit more expensive than you need. But just for the sheer amount of fishing I do, I spent the money and got those bit better rods. So that's pretty much, in summary, uh, the gear that I use while I was up there. Yeah, well, I use similar gear, really. The X-Raps for trolling. We we use the green, sort of the Dorado. 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 Um, we both lost those. Uh, I lost mine within about, I reckon, half an hour of tying it on. So they obviously are a win. Um, for the heavy casting and popping, I tied this one on. I just really love the Chug Norris. I think they're easy to use. This is the same colour I got my big GTs on last trip, and this is what I caught my RAS on. So I'm a bit of a fan. They're just, you can cast them a mile, especially with a bit of wind behind you. And uh, the thing I did different, which I got off one of the guides, was instead of doing a really long stroke, 
and trying to get this huge big burst of water um, he said do shorter ones and just keep your tension on your line because you're still getting the attention of the fish but you've got plenty of strike room and i hooked up better when i started using that just not so big long strokes i even did it with the uh, riptides as well shorter little strokes so that when that fish hits you've got heaps of room to just really jam that lure and set the hook and the other thing was i found it easy to keep tension on my line with that shorter stroke um, yep when we were on the flats I used this non-stop until I ran out of them um, I just love this sinking 155 riptide this exact color I just got smashed on it every time I had it out I got smashed on it trolling it everything I used it for was a total win easy to use like you said the floating one sort of sits up there and it's a little bit more work I just like these because they sort of suspend and they just twitch and move around they're great and then the other lure that I used a lot of um, was when we were doing the, the um, smaller jigging, the lighter jigging, I used, now this is not the Z-Man size that I used, but it's the color, the nuked pilchard. Um, I you used, up on that. I, don't, I did, I was smashed it. I had an eight inch um, nuked chicken uh, Z-Man and I used it on the three ounce jig head and uh, I, that's the only soft plastic I put down and I did great. I caught all my fish on it, loved it, and uh, thought it performed really, really well. So as far as um, rods and reels, I used the Darwa gear that was supplied by No Man. I didn't, I wasn't able to bring anything up for this trip and I found it worked really well. Um, same as Keza and Dazza, um, the gear we used was very similar. Uh, on the flats, I started off with a little Nomad Madscad, uh, 115 sinking. And like Darren was saying before, when, when it's a little bit windy, I just, I find myself struggling with the poppers and, and the stick baits that sort of come out because you get them on the front of a wave. So I just found this little Madscad was awesome. The way they swim, again, it's that sweeping motion and they just really, you look at them in the water and they flick like a, you know, like a real bait fish. So, that was really good, caught a couple of good fish on that. Uh, the other one I went to was this um, Nomad Tackle Riptide 155. We talked about that in the episode. Again, just a fantastic action. And because it's the sinking model, it was just, again, a bit easier. There's nothing more frustrating than when you're winding one of these in and it flicks out of the water, just like, oh, come on, especially when it's a cracker cast. And for me, that don't happen that often. So it's good to keep the lure in the water as much as possible. So these two Nomad Tackles, the Riptide and the Mazcad, fantastic. Um, I actually used a bigger one. The red bass I caught after Karen's Rass was on one of these bigger models. Again, just really simple to cast, simple to use, and you can get them a hell of a long way. So as far as hard bodies, they were my three. Uh, big performer for me was the Z-Mans again. Um, I caught my massive uh, trout on one of these seven inch uh, jerk shads in nuke chicken. They're just so tough too. Like oh, I got, when I got a massive hit on this big eight inch fella, it come up and just looks like the plastic hadn't been touched. Yeah. And they are just, you know, they are just so tough and you can use them again and again. So yeah, the seven inch jerk shad for me and these big heroes, they work really well. And we always combine those with TT jig heads. And like I say, when I got these in the mail from uh, Z-Man and TT, I'm like, man, these things are massive. But when you're dropping them down that far, you need a big jig head. The other thing is, we didn't, ha I don't remember any hooks bending or anything no. like that. Like, you know, you're dealing with big fish, you're mm. dealing with heavy weights, heavy line classes you got to have something that's going to be able to take the yeah. punishment and well, yeah. they did great the, and like you said the plastics themselves yeah. i used the entire pack i'm out of them that's why i don't have the right size yeah. but the only time i lost them is if i lost the whole fish yeah you know yeah well they're built you know that's the thing they're built with mustard hooks so they're very good very good hooks and once you get those plastics on there the headlock system just keeps them on really really well so Z mans were great. Um, for me, again, I used the rods and reels supplied on the boat. Most of them were Daiwa. Um, but I did take up, you know, because I thought we might do a bit of light stuff, is this. Uh, it's a 1-3 Fate, uh, seven foot one, medium heavy, extra fast. And this was so much fun. You put a lot of hurt on yeah, that rod. with that Stratic. You know, it was just 
Oh, it's just awesome. Again, you know, you weren't cranking them in, and it was, you know, just the bend on that and just how whippy it was. Just so good. It's great for jigging, great for the plastics, but just a lot of fun, you know, to fish with. So I'll be taking that again for sure. And uh, so that's about it for the gear guide for this episode. For any more information, um, just look up these guys' websites. It's all on there, and we'll see you next time.